Hello, everybody. I wanted to come on and share some thoughts that I've been having today around um, what I'm seeing a lot of when working with one-on-one -on -one clients right now. Um, where we are landing right now is we are um, we are in April, whenever you're listening to this video, um, and it is spring. And so I find that as we're kind of tuning to the seasons and moving through the seasons, uh, different kind of themes and issues and experiences come up um, over and over again with all of my clients, the one-on-one -on -one clients and then that I'm working with and then people that I interact with in, um, in group programs and even just like on Instagram asking questions and stuff too. So I just wanted to share a little bit about what I'm seeing in case it's helpful for someone else um, who might be experiencing some of the same things that are in the collective as well. So I hope this is coming to everyone and you're doing well in the spring. Hello. Um, it's nice to interact. And um, I think, you know, one of the main things that people have been coming to me saying that they're feeling is um, a little bit of like stagnation will be kind of the, the word that I guess I'm going to use. Um, maybe a little bit of stuckness, but I think stagnation is probably a better word. So um, in spring is really a time where we're kind of like emerging from winter. And, um, you know, if we even look outside around us, things are starting to emerge and come out of the ground and grow and kind of like oh, open up and take shape. And in that transition period, we can sometimes feel like we need to shake off a little bit of that stagnation or different systems in our body might be working to process things a little bit differently as we're moving from season to season. Um, I, as many of you know, work with a lot of people that are dealing with chronic health issues, whether that be autoimmunity, um, not even diagnosed autoimmunity, hor you know, hormone imbalances, um, just like fatigue, just generally not feeling well. And so I always check in with people at the turn of seasons to see like, how are you feeling? What is your body doing? What are you noticing? And so I've had multiple people say like, I'm just feeling kind of like, oh, like sluggish, stagnant. Um, a phrase that was used is like that my body is bigger than I am, that I like have some headaches. Um, I'm feeling a little foggy. I'm feeling heavier than usual. Um, I, yeah, feeling like a little, a little stuck. And so on one hand, we can see that stagnation as like a seasonal thing, but also just in the broader context of the world that we live in right now, we are exposed to so many different types of things through the food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe, the things we put on our bodies. And our bodies have a ton of built-in systems for helping us to filter and process and um, get rid of things we don't need while you know absorbing and assimilating things like from our food, from our environment, from our water that our body does need to function and to be healthy and maintain this healthy homeostasis and balance. What I can find is when we're having these feelings of stagnation or being full or stuck, it's sometimes because some of these pathways that our body has, and we can call them drainage pathways, these pathways our body has for filtering, assimilating, and excreting things we no longer need can be a little bit clogged, stuck, or backed up. And this idea of opening up drainage pathways um, might be new to you. Um, it's a different kind of idea or concept than like a detox or something like that. It's really um, how are we optimizing the function of our different body systems? And when we talk about functional medicine or functional nutrition, um, which is a lot of the work I do, is we want to optimize the function of these body systems so that they can work for us. So if you are feeling, and I'm going to talk through the different layers of this um, drainage and kind of show you an image so that this helps you as well. But if any of our, you know, drainage pathways fail to function at optimal levels, these kind of different toxins, whether that be, you know, bacteria, um, parasites, even heavy metals, or just like chemicals or general things, you know, that we don't want in our body. Um, will not exit the body. And instead they kind of recirculate in the system, get reabsorbed by the body, and this can lead to more stagnation. And over time, this can lead to some of the symptoms that we might be feeling, symptoms of dysfunction that we're talking about. 
So this isn't always a big drastic thing. Like we don't need to go do like these giant juice cleanses or like this, like big, like cleanse, you know, detox, whatever it's, it's a little bit of a different concept of how do we start to optimize these different pathways and drainage pathways so that our body can flow. Um, I have seen it make a huge difference in my own personal health and with the health of my clients as well, especially those of us dealing with, uh, chronic, chronic health issues, hormone imbalance, autoimmunity, digestive issues, brain fog, all these different pieces. So this is my invitation to you. I'm going to share, um, just a little bit more about this drainage pathway. And then I'm just going to share a couple like easy little things or tips you can work with right now. Um, and then if you want to go deeper into this and you're like, yes, this is me too. Um, let me know because I can support you. And a lot of this is really, really individual, you know, like all of it. So I'm going to do my best today to give you kind of an overview to get started and we can go more individual. So I'm going to share a picture. Sure. Because visual is sometimes helpful. So hopefully you can see this. Um, so this is the drainage funnel. And you can see here down at the bottom is our colon, liver and bile ducts, our lymphatic system, organs and tissues and cells. I am not going to talk through every single thing today, but I just want to give you an idea here of the idea of what, it, what do we mean by drainage? Like, so colon, that's literally going to the bathroom. Literally, that is just having a bowel movement. So, you know, going to the bathroom is basically us kind of like taking out the trash. You know, we eat food through our body. We absorb the things we want to absorb. The things that we want to excrete as waste get moved through our small intestine, our large intestine, and get out in the colon. So you can imagine if there's any kind of obstruction to this, i.e. we're constipated, um, which means we're not going to the bathroom every day or at least one to three times a day, that might surprise you. That is normal. We want to be moving these things out. We can become backed up um, and that drainage pathway isn't open. And this can have kind of downstream effects for all of the other pathways, right? When we have things moving through our cells and our mitochondria, our organs and tissues flowing through our lymphatic system, which is like kind of like a, I don't want to say the sewer system, body, but a little bit um, to kind of get things out to then be transported into our kidneys to be excreted through our liver and our bile ducts. So we can see here at the very base, like if we're not going to the bathroom every day, if we're dealing with chronic constipation or we're just dealing with like gas and bloating, um, undigested food in stool, like not breaking things down, um, it can start to stagnate us a little bit. And that can have repercussions on our liver, uh, our lymphatic system and all the way. So I just want you to kind of see this um, image just to get an idea of these different drainage pathways that we just want to tend to and make sure that they are um, they are flowing, they are open and that we can address any issues with them. Um, you can see here on the side, there's also like our skin, our kidneys and our lungs. These are other ways that we, um, filter things through <clears throat> as well. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing that, but I might come back to it. So if we're looking at the colon, I'm just going to take us through kind of maybe the bottom three there to give you a little bit of an idea. So if we're looking at the colon, you might be experiencing, um, things like I talked about like the constipation, gas or bloating, um, straining at stools, like it's kind of hard to go to the bathroom. Um, you might also be experiencing things like allergies, skin issues, um, because if we can't get it out through our normal pathways, sometimes it can come out through the skin. So that could be a clue that some of our drainage pathways might not be open. Um, if you're also noticing undigested food in stool, again, that can be a sign that the colon drainage pathway needs a little bit of help. So there's a ton of ways that we can support um, going to the bathroom. It's a little bit individual, depending on what's going on for you. You know, there, there could be some things in there like bacteria imbalance, SIBO, you know, things like that, that could be kind of like blocking different things that you might need to work with a practitioner on to treat, but in general, check in, maybe you do a little food journaling, um, and stool journaling. How often are you going to the bathroom? Um, I love just checking in on basic things first. Like, are you drinking enough water? Um, you know, are you getting in a, a good amount of, of fiber and veggies? Um, again, this can be a double-edged sword if we're dealing with bacteria imbalance. So that's where the individuality comes into play. Um, you know, are you getting a bit of movement to kind of get yourself going in the morning? 
Um, and something I love to use is magnesium. I find magnesium to be pretty universally across the board um, tolerated. It's depending on the dose. You're going to want to check with your practitioner who you're working with. This is just me kind of giving some educational advice here, but I love using um, magnesium citrate. I use magnesium calm powder. There's a couple different ones you can use to support your bowels. Um, but using that in the evenings, dissolving it in water and helping the bowels kind of move along, we can be really commonly deficient in magnesium because of our soil depletion the foods we're eating. So um, I always kind of say with that one, like titrate it to bowel tolerance. Um, so if you, you know, take too much that you're going to have loose stools um, and that's not going to feel great. So you want to dial that back. And again, work with your practitioner to figure out really what's going to be best for you supplement wise, but that could be one to start to look into. There's um, other, you know, good herbs and supplements that can help with kind of like moving, moving bowels along and getting things going for you while you're addressing other things with your gut. But we really want to keep that colon drainage pathway open. Okay. Um, the second one is the liver and the gallbladder. So you could, if, if this is feeling stagnant for you, or this drainage pathway is blocked, you might be feeling, um, brain fog can be kind of a common one. I see, um, you might be experiencing again, undigested food and stool because we need bile flowing from the liver and the, from the gallbladder, um, into the digestive system to be able to break down fats and break down food. So if you are seeing that your food isn't digested when you're um, having a bowel movement that can give us clues as the liver drainage pathways, a little, might be a little bit blocked or stagnant. Um, skin issues like rashes or acne. This is something that happens to me when my liver is blocked. I break out all around here. This can be kind of lymphatic too. I'll talk about it. But um, again, if we can't get these different, you know, toxins, chemicals, bacteria, things that naturally want to like move through our body out, it can come out through our skin. Um, so that can be a key. Um, sometimes the dark circles under the eyes can be a key that there's some liver stagnation, indigestion. You might even be feeling pain in your right upper quadrant here in your abdomen. That's where your liver is um, or your gallbladder. Um, and also hormone imbalance too. Um, the liver is really critical place for packaging and processing hormones. So if our liver is backed up and dealing with a bunch of other stuff, um, we can start to find that we can have hormone imbalance. It's really interesting too, because if we have start to have like gut imbalance or like the colon is a bit blocked too, um, that can kind of trickle up and cause some hormone imbalance too. So it's all, it's all connected. Um, a couple simple things I like to do to support the liver pathway. There's so many and they're individual, but, um, there's some, you know, I really like using different, um, herbs, bitter, bitter herbs. So there's like bitters spray you can use on your tongue before meals. Um, there's like droppers, um, of bitters, you know, that have like dandelion and different, um, bitter and liver supporting herbs in there that can be really helpful. Um, there's a few, you know, to, depending on what you're kind of needing with your liver, there's a few liver supplements I recommend. Um, you can reach out to me and ask more about that. Um, we'd probably have to individualize that and tailor that to, to you, but there are definitely, um, really good ones. Um, I like that can be things like N acetylcysteine, if that's relevant to you. Um, it can be things like milk thistle, if that's relevant to you, you do want to make sure you're targeting the right pathway for you with the liver, because I have had before where, um, clients are dealing with maybe like hormone imbalance and, and kind of flaring and other drainage pathways aren't open and they take something like mil milk thistle and it's like too much on the body too fast. So with anything, you'll want to make sure you talk to your practitioner, but also start low and go slow. Um, and, and usually just like trying one thing at a time too, as I'm a really big fan of, um, I also like castor oil packs. They're like an old timey remedy, um, but I find them to be quite effective. Uh, you do want to make sure, you know, if you're someone that knows you have gallstones or dealing with issues like that, you might want to be a little more careful with castor oil packs, um, but they are just a really nice way to kind of like stimulate that, um, stimulate the liver you know, to do its job. And I'm always surprised that something like topical with heat can, can do that on an organ in the body. But I've experimented it with myself 
for years and had some, um, a lot of my clients use them and they're pretty like minimally invasive, you know, and they're pretty easy. They're kind of relaxing. And I do find them to be supportive and helpful. So you can look into that as well. There's a brand called queen of thrones. They like have a really easy system for it that you could try. You can also totally DIY yours at home and not spend money <laughs> on that. Um, okay. The last one I want to talk about is lymph. So you might be feeling, and this is, this is what a lot of my clients were feeling, um, what was around just kind of like a puffiness, um, a stagnation, maybe you're feeling circulation issues. Uh, maybe you literally have lymph nodes, you know, swollen lymph nodes that come and go, um, inability to sweat. Like if you're working out or you go into a sauna and it takes you a really long time or you like, you can't sweat, you just get really red. That can be an indication that's that, that pathway is, is kind of blocked. Um, sweating is one way that we kind of release, um, and detoxify, um, again, skin issues too, can be a big one with lymph, like things just not flowing and needing a way to come out and they come out through, through the skin, um, swelling, sinus issues, headaches, um, tight muscles and knots in the body. Um, I forgot if I said brain fog, it's kind of one that comes up a lot, um, enlarged lymph nodes and prolonged viruses or colds. Like it's just harder to get over something can be an indication again, as you can hear, some of these are kind of vague. These are going to be indicators of other things, depending on what's going on for you health wise. So you want to, you know, you just want to make sure you're getting the right support for yourself. But, um, these are a lot of the symptoms that my, my clients were experiencing just kind of this like stagnation. So what we want to do here is, you know, if you start, if you're starting to put things in, even, um, even like for, for lymph or, you know, you're doing other kinds of treatments or you're treating something else, but these other drainage pathways aren't open. It can just be a lot harder to gain traction and to heal. And sometimes we can even have more like adverse reactions or just feel like a things are stuck. Like they're not moving, they're not flowing. So a couple of my favorite things to support lymph, um, that you can do at home that you've probably heard of are like dry brushing. It's like a really gentle kind of way to stimulate the lymph flow on your body. Um, you can do that before, or after you shower, um, sauna can be a really good one for people. Um, I kind of like, I have an interesting relationship with sauna because some of my issues with autoimmunity come in the form of fever. And, um, and so I don't know heat, like I have to be careful with heat. So I think some people sauna is like, Oh, like it's such a game changer and it feels so good for people. And infrared sauna can help us just like sweat things out and get things moving. Um, but for some of us, we want to, again, start low, go slow with it. So just feel into that for yourself. Is it the right time? Also, you can even just start with like a few minutes of, of sauna. Like don't try to put yourself necessarily into like a 45 minute infrared sauna thing. Cause I've had bad reactions to that before, but again, this is totally just me and, and you'll want to individualize it to you. Um, but yeah, sauna can be beautiful and, uh, rebounding. So like, actually I haven't pulled the trigger on getting one of these, but a little, um, trampoline, a little rebounding trampoline that you can kind of bounce on can help with, it helps literally stimulate the lymph, um, going on walks, you know, gentle walks circulation. If you're in the middle of um, a flare or not having much energy, that can be tough to do. So even just like some gentle stretching and yoga can be great. Um, just a little bit of rebounding, like you don't want to like you don't want to like go hard, right? This is kind of like, the, this is like a gentle opening is what we want to think about. Um, and then there's def definitely supplements and herbs for the lymphatic system that can be helpful as well. If you're needing kind of that more additional support, um, they're pretty individualized. So just reach out to me if you're um, wanting to learn a little bit more about that or needing some more individual support. So I just want to talk through kind of those first three layers and we kind of get into the like organs and cells and mitochondria and things like that, um, which I find, you know, we need to kind of work with a practitioner on and work with targeted supplementing on and all of that. But, um, I hope that these first three, you can just start to get an idea and do a little assessment for yourself. Are you feeling some of those symptoms? You know, are you experiencing that? Have you been experiencing that maybe your whole life, you know, um, is it getting worse over the last couple of years or, do you notice it getting worse in this season and your body just needs a little bit of help and support to kind of gently open those. And again, I'm a big fan of, um, 
like gentle openings. I think sometimes we think we start to think, oh my gosh, something's unblocked or something's wrong or this or that. Like, how can I like force it, you know, or how can I like, oh, but like, that's what I always want to do. Cause I just want to feel better. But if we can think of it as just like gently tending to these, um, really important systems in our body to open up these drainage pathways, allow things to flow through. And then when we're going to, you know, do other treatments, like, um, maybe we have some bacteria imbalance that we're working with. Maybe we're working with, you know, a parasite treatment. Maybe we are working with Lyme or mold treatments or whatever, maybe, you know, none of that is relevant. Um, they are much more effective and our body is able to, uh, actually process that a lot more. And sometimes we find when we just begin to work with the colon, the liver and the lymph and open these things up, our body kind of knows where to go and what to do. So if you're dealing with any of these symptoms, plus, you know, any hormone imbalances, like painful period, periods, skin breakouts, gut issues, digestive issues, autoimmunity, um, leaky gut, you know, all of these different things, this is totally relevant uh, for you. And I hope that it is helpful and I'm happy to help individualize if you're listening and you're like, yeah, this is me. Um, I'm happy to help work with you. I work with clients one-on-one. I have a few spots that I'm opening up for spring, um, and summer as well. So if you're needing this more targeted individualized support, let's do it. Now is the time really, it's a really good time in this season right now to kind of open, you know, like work with the energy that we have of, of spring. Um, and work with these pieces. And I find that people that have felt stuck for a really long time when we start working on these pieces um, can start to feel a lot of relief um, and start to feel like their body kind of can come back to a balance or homeostasis a little bit better. Even if you're feeling like you have a bunch of weight that's stuck on that, like, again, the, like the stuck or like it's stagnant that won't come off, um, focusing on these areas I find can really help too. So reach out to me. I hope this is helpful. Leave a comment or question. If anything comes up for you, you can head to my website, christinatidwell.com and you can book in a free discovery call. If you want to work together one-on-one -on -one. again, like I said, I'm opening just a couple more spots right now. I would love to support you, um, in this season and just get you feeling better, get you feeling good. Um, I promise it's possible. I've been through a tough season myself of, of health and, you know, things coming up from the past and all this different stuff and um, working on opening these pathways, gently supporting my body and really like remembering and trusting that given a chance and being pointed in the right direction, the body wants to heal and the body does know what to do. Sometimes we just get stuck um, and it's okay. All of us do. And just knowing what path to get on and kind of the right guidance to get on and uh, speeding up the process a little bit. So we don't feel like we're just in this kind of like constant cycle of trying things over and over. Um, I find to be really, 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 really helpful. So reach out to me there. You can always email me to at info at um, or reply to this email that I'm sending to you. And I am here for you. All right. I hope you have a really good rest of your day and week.